Hi friends, in Planet Earth Dating, it's Friday, March 1st, 2019. In both the Lynn Life and the Jamie Body Mind, the authorized souls remain only child souls from the deeper, denser dimensions, and all other souls from all other dimensions, as long as the souls are already living by the many Search for Truth rules already given to the Search for Truth community by wiser minds above all of us. And friends, if you observe what we're doing, you see how we have got to use our hands to hold our channels up. And this is true for all of us. Friends, really just focus on this. This host life has been practicing in this effort for 29 years now. That's true. And um, actually maybe 30 years now, coming up on 30 years, could have that wrong. And the point is that we still have to hold up our channels and we will always have to hold up our channels because of the nature of astral physics. That's true. It's just how it works. It's like brushing teeth. Did you brush your teeth yesterday? Are you going to brush them today? We hope you will. This is something we have got to do. And given that in Ground Zero, Planet Earth, North American Human Society, this is viewed as unacceptable behavior. Nobody's doing it, and therefore nobody's got their channels up, That's friends. True. And all these presences in less dense dimensions who are also not doing it, they also don't have their channels up. And so it doesn't matter who they think they're listening to. They're not actually listening to wiser minds above them because their channels aren't up. That's and so true. they're hearing wherever their channels have fallen. That's who they're hearing. For who missed the message, and why do you ask? We think the point that's being made is that we have got to be willing to do things that are inconvenient and unpopular and something that our societies frown upon if we actually want to stay in connection with higher powers above us. And to not stay in connection with them means to pretend that karma isn't real That's true. and that we're not going to get the book thrown at us when we die as is inevitable death being simply a transition from one dimension to a less dense dimension. It's very quiet. It's very quiet. Way up there, they're talking about a client who came recently to that one's healing practice and he came for hypnosis between lives hypnosis yeah he came for between lives hypnosis and it was an interesting situation because he had all the physical symptoms of being in deep trance and we would start the process and within 30 seconds or less than a minute he would interrupt the process and say, I'm not in trance. And I would say internally, well, uh, your body disagrees with you because there are physical symptoms of trance state. That's true. And he, he had it, so uh, he was somehow wanting to disrupt the process and we're attempting to detangle what's going on there. What, what was he doing? And there are a number of theories upstairs about what was going on. One of those theories is that he really wanted to be able to control the process. Oh, yeah, that's true. And that that isn't what we do here. What we do is use hypnosis as a way to connect with what's actually going on with reality that's true. in its multidimensional aspects. And he maybe didn't want to play that actual game. He wanted to play nicey-nice fantasy, and we, we don't do that here. That's true. Somebody else is pointing to how he had said he had been into this for some extended period of time, something like 34 years. That's but true. But he had never actually been regressed. And they're talking about a client that made it all the way through the core curriculum. Yeah, so she was true. a client and a student. 
She was a client and a student. She made it all the way through the core curriculum and into the higher level classes. And there was something off about her way of being, and we couldn't figure it out. She was a very nice person, or it took us a long time to figure it out. That's true. And then in one higher level class, she was talking about some of the meditation books she had read, and uh, it was channeled in to ask how what was her actual meditation practice like? Stop talking about the books. What actually happens in your personal meditation practice? How does this play out? And the answer was that she did not have a personal meditation practice. She yeah, wasn't a meditator. She just read books about it. And this gentleman who was here yesterday also had for 30-something years just read books about these things. And we know that it's it's something that is understandable that when we read books about things we come to think of ourselves as an expert in it that's true but there's a difference between reading books about um, how to ride a bicycle and actually riding a bicycle that's true uh, there's a difference between reading books about meditating and actually attempting to meditate oh yeah, that's there's a difference true. between reading books about being connected with wiser minds above us and actually attempting to do it that's true and we think that that might have been what was going on with that gentleman yesterday. We, we need to figure it out and get back to him because he's on our calendar for next month and we don't want to do that again. That's true. Not like that. Not like that. We want to actually get into it with what's really going on with his higher souls and his guardian angels and if he's going to interrupt the process every time we get into it so that we have to restart every 20 minutes and life's too short that's true for whom is the message and why do you ask and really the point is friends whoever's asking if you yourselves aren't using your hands your own hands of whatever density your form is use your hands to hold up your channels then you're not doing what it takes to hear wiser minds above you, not even the very first step. And this is necessary but not sufficient. There's a lot of other things that we have to go through to get that contact. But if you're not even willing to take the first step, why are you pretending that you are? That's very quiet. Very quiet. They're also pointing to the other person on yesterday's calendar, That's a woman what they're talking about. also here for hypnosis, here for past life hypnosis. That's true. To work through some scary repetitive dreams. And scary repetitive dreams are almost always memories of past life situations that have not been fully worked through. That's true. And all we need to do is work through it and then the dreams go away. So the process was similar in that we were doing a hypnotic regression into a past life, which is how all the between lives processes must occur because how we get to the between lives state is we die. That's true. So we go into a past life, go through the death experience, which is beautiful, get up into the higher dimensions and discover what's actually going on up there. And some people like it and some people don't. That's true. For whom is the message and why do you ask? So this woman who had these scary dreams didn't want to do what the protocol is that actually has been proven to work in 30 years of healing practice. We, we know what works. We've got to desensitize. We've got to go into the experience. That's true. And hypnosis is one way to go into the experience and she wanted to use hypnosis but she wanted to use hypnosis to just kind of magically fluff the troubles away without dealing with them that's and true that's not how life works and she 
uh, put up a decent argument both in the pre-talk and in some crucial moments of the process but then finally she gave in oh, and said true. all right and went through the process and she found it to be wonderful yeah that's true and then we got to the end of it and she has maybe two or three of these scary repetitive dreams and we said all right that's the process and so what we can do is do that with those other two dreams also and now you know how how it works and we don't know what she will choose whether or not maybe all three of the scary dreams will go away because she was willing to deal with one sometimes that works that's true sometimes it doesn't but the point is that we resist so long and so hard doing what it is that we are supposed to do. That's and so true. we're going through life with this push-pull, one foot on the brake, one foot on the accelerator, and it's exhausting and not productive, and it's unpleasant for everybody involved. That's true. And how wonderful it feels to just stop putting the foot on the brake and just do what we're supposed to do. It feels freeing and true and lovely for him is the message and why do you ask well, it goes way up it goes way up what now to put planet earth back the way we found it and what difference does it make how we define we if we're defining we as human society surely Let's put planet Earth back, back the, the way, way we, we found, found it. it. And if we're defining we as something else, something more multidimensional, given that planet Earth is a test planet, the tests have failed. These tests have been how to get presences to live their soul plans. And now we have an oppositional, defiant, disorder, dimension planet combo pack. That's that true. Everybody pretty much is in full-on oppositional, defiant disorder. I don't want to do it, and you can't make me. Just planet full of feral lives. That's true. A and we think it's in many, many, many dimensions. We think it might be in all the dimensions of planet Earth. We haven't found any that don't feel feral and if we made that statement saying all dimensions of planet earth and there was some dimension that wasn't feral there would be a shouting and screaming from upstairs saying that's not true this one's not feral that's true. we don't hear that no i don't hear it so possibly all dimensions of planet earth are feral and whether or not all dimensions or only most of the dimensions are feral we don't think that really makes a huge difference the point is that the experiments failed and that that's okay nobody cares about failures but what matters is that we acknowledge that they failed and then clean up our messes that's true. just clean it up put it back the way we found it for him is the message, and why do you ask? May we please have instant karma, each of us for ourselves, for all of us on planet Earth, and for all who pass through planet Earth, for all of us in ground zero planet Earth, and for all of us on planet Earth in all dimensions. May we please have instant karma, each of us for ourselves, not as a collective, but each of us for ourselves. Somebody's talking about ant colonies. They are. And how it is when there's an ant pile built in the wrong place and an ant colony built in the wrong place. They put their home in the wrong place. And how does one actually deal with each individual ant? Because some ants might be saying, this isn't the right place. We shouldn't be building it here. This isn't correct. Let's build over there. And then how do we know which ants are which? And how do we apply the karmic um, answer individually? I don't know. Please look up. This is just a bounce point. Please look up. Please look up. Please look up. All we do is deliver the miraculous positive improvements, the life-transforming healing methods, art, 
simply to deliver. The method is to deliver the gift already made upstairs. That's true. We don't know how to make them. I we just deliver know. them. We're cosmic couriers and cosmic custodians. That's true. That's all we are. For whom is the message? And why do you ask? 